So DTS versus SSIS engine speed test. This was based off just a small, simple package. Um, so these are just some stats that we got on this. So first off, let's just look, look at 32-bit. Uh, so this is just a 32-bit dual core machine, pulling one million rows out and writing to a SQL table with no transformations. So it's just going from a source to a destination, nothing special. SSIS was 65% faster than DTS, and this is right out of the box. So adding transformations would add more SSIS advantage. So if you were actually transforming that data, you're dropping in some more transformations, it's going to increase the time immensely on the DTS side, but it doesn't really increase it that much on the SSIS side. So, and from the sample package that was run, uh, just some stats, the average runtime, and again, this is only on a 32-bit machine, so if it was 64-bit, it would be a massive advantage over DTS. So an average runtime from, from a package like this, you know, on DTS we could get uh, 32.2 seconds, whereas with SSIS with a SQL Server destination, 11.3 seconds, and SSIS with the ODB destination, 12.3 seconds. So, you know, we're only talking seconds here, but you can see the, uh, the massive increase there. All right, now move to the next slide here, designing packages. So here's another huge difference. Right now we have the DTS designer. This is all that you have to design your DTS packages. So, and again, not a whole lot to it. Pretty simple, there's not a whole lot of tasks uh, or connections that you can use. But with SSIS, they've changed all of that. With SSIS, you have the Business Intelligence Development Studio, or BIDS, as it's uh, more than likely referred to. And this is just the, uh, you know, the, the, the coding environment, you know, where we're going to put together all these packages. And as you can see, it's just Visual Studio. So you have access to a lot more features uh, in BIDS. And again, since you're doing all of this in BIDS, it's all XML. And you can view that XML code very easily. You may not want to change it, but you can view it very easily. Now, comparing DTS to SSIS objects. This is something that's uh, another huge advantage that SSIS has over DTS. First off, uh, transform data task from DTS. You know, you're pulling data from, in this case, a file, you know, doing something with that data, and just dropping it into a destination. So, you know, this is basically all that you have in DTS. Now, when you get into SSIS, again, they've changed that. They've added the data flow task, which is where all of your ETL is going to take place. You're extracting all of this, these rows, transforming them in some way, and loading them into the, into the destinations. Now, as you can see here, just from the screenshot, uh, and any of you that, that, that are currently using SSIS, you have many more, uh, you know, much more uh, tasks that you can use. So the data flow task is going to give you a whole new set of tools. So, and things that you would have to normally write ActiveX for, you don't have to do that anymore in SSIS. Also connections, and this is a, a really big one as well, a really big advantage. You know, when you're using DTS connections, you would have to use, say, you know, in this last uh, example, you, you, with the tasks anyway that we just looked at, you would have that flat file source and a connection destination. And every time you called that same connection, you would have to add that connection to the package. You keep having to add that connection to the, to the DTS package. Well, again, that's been changed in SSIS. With SSIS, you have connection managers. So these connection managers will hold connections for the whole package, and you don't have to constantly re-add them. They can you just put them in there once, and you can call those connections anytime you need them throughout the entire package. All right, so we're going to look at some connections inside of SSIS and also look at how fields are mapped uh, inside of an SSIS package as well. Right, so if we jump into bids, and I'm in the bids environment here, which you can see is just Visual Studio, basically, and I've just created a project. I've created a, a project 
for specifically for this webinar. And I just have one default package. I'm just going to use this package real quick just to uh, demonstrate how you would add connections or, or the difference between the DTS uh, package connections and SSIS. Now, as it stands right now, if I wanted to look at a DTS package, I would have to launch my uh, management studio. And I would have to go into, from my database engine, into my management folder and find the legacy folder. And then the DTS, the data transformation services folder. And then I can open up a package to view it. So this is something that I would have to, this is the only way that I could view it currently in the SQL Server. Now I can interact with these packages as well. You can see we have all these different connections that have been added. Well, let me take a look now at SSIS. And SSIS, in the bids environment, there's two things that I can do here. Right over here in the Solution Explorer, I can add a data source. And this data source can be used by all of the packages that I add to my project. Now, the alternative way of doing this is to add a connection manager. And these connection managers will be used you know, exclusively by the package itself. So I'm going to throw in a data source and a connection manager. So from here, I'm just going to right click and add a new data source. It's going to take you through a wizard. And I'm going to delete this. This is one I've created previously. But I have no connections here. I'm just going to go ahead and create a brand new connection for my data source. So from here, you'll see up at the top, we have a list of providers. Now, these providers are basically all the, different, uh, all the different entities that you can connect to. You'll see that we have the .NET providers. They're all categorized for you. We have uh, .NET providers for ODB. Uh, there's some native ODB providers. So you have things like the uh, Microsoft Jet 4.0 if you're you know, interacting with Excel. Um, there's also one for access, analysis services, uh, even Oracle. They even provide you a provider for Oracle. Now, the majority of these uh, providers are really only going to be are going to be everything that you need in most cases. Now, when it comes to Oracle, you may have to download some uh, some extra providers for those, uh, especially depending on what version of Oracle you're connecting to. You may even find some very obscure data sources you're connecting to that you may actually have to pay for for providers. You may actually have to purchase those drivers. But for the most part, everything you need is already going to be here for you. <clears throat> 